Um, fuck Hyundai. That's it. That's the video. No, um, the <laughs> reason I started it that way, uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, but first I wanted to read this cause I think it's funny. Um, and this is an informal vlog and not a debate. So I don't mind poisoning the well a little bit here, uh, and saying, uh, from the Wikipedia page on, uh, Hyundai Motor Group. Following several years of rapid gro growth, the group sold 8.01 million vehicles in 2015, falling short of its sales target. In 2017, the group sold 7.25 million vehicles, the lowest since 2012. Hyundai is the parent company of Hyundai and Kia and... Uh, he Hyundai Heavy Industries Group, Development Company Group, Department Store Group, and Marine and Fire Insurance, all as separate sort of, I guess, divested companies. I'm not ex n not divested, uh, diversified, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, but the reason I'm bringing all of this up, uh, like, okay, you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take the low road here. Uh, just a little bit longer, and say, you know, have you have you ever, leave me a comment, if somebody's ever asked you what your favorite car is, what the car you would get if you had X amount of money is, and your first thought was, I want a Hyundai or a Kia, let me know, <laughs> let me know in them comments, because I can't think of a single soul who wants either, um, it seems to me that the Hyundai brand is built on, like, <laughs> basically building somewhat subpar vehicles that are cheap enough that nobody gives a shit. Um, or to build the, the car that's cheap enough and hip-looking enough that you can ignore that it's mostly plastic and give it to your kid as their learner car or something. Or, like, you're a soccer mom and you want to seem like the... the the, the, the soccer mom who gets it. You're in tune, right? So you get this boxy-ass Kia Soul, and you, you saw the commercial where, like, hamsters were driving it or something, and you thought, this is the hip new car. People are going to like me if I drive this. <laughs> um, the reason I'm bringing up Hyundai um, and bagging on Hyundai so much, other than fuck Hyundai... Um, is that there's a trending tag on Twitter that's not actually trending. It's not trending. It's not. Twitter, for those of you who don't know, are a pack of lying cunts. Uh, they're a media manipulation engine that cries if their users manipulate anything. Um, banning people for platform manipulation and spam when that's their fucking business model. Their business model is both platform manipulation and spam. Period. That's it. Um, they uh, get paid to advertise bullshit um, <laughs> based on cookies and based on preference collection that's usually not even that accurate. For instance, I... Um, I have this running joke on, on my uh, Twitter timeline that you may occasionally see, and that running joke is that, uh, that sports fans are furries because they have, like, all these animals affiliated with their fandom. Um, and because of that, and because I occasionally look up sports-related things, Twitter's like, hey, this guy likes sports. Let's give him sports ads. It's for some reason also, by the way, like women's sports and ads targeted toward black people. I think Twitter might be confused about a few things. So they're spamming me with ads and I can't like stop that without potentially sacrificing my account because, you know, I'm kind of underground with this one. Uh, but like, let's be perfectly clear. Everybody has had an ad 
that wasn't targeted toward them properly. You know? Twitter gets their funding off of assuming what you like and sending you bullshit based off of that. But that's not the only way they get funding. They also get funding by lying. By putting uh, on their trending and, and, and for you pages or whatever they call it. I think that's what they call it. Let me check. Yeah, for you pages uh, in the discover section, um, which has an identity crisis every time you change the size of the window. It's either a, a hashtag or a magnifying glass, depending. Twitter doesn't even know how to fucking code. They're, they're, they're very bad. Um, <laughs> but they put on their for you or trending pages, which should be user driven, which should be driven by what's most engaged with and what's most done. Uh, they put ads because people paid to have a hashtag put there. People paid to have a hashtag put there along with, um, you know, fucking uh, a video or a picture or something. Uh, it's a fucking ad, though. And it's not trending. But they put it alongside the trends because they want you to think that this business is doing well. They want you to think that you should support this business. They directly support these businesses in doing so. Um, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because today's lie that I saw was question everything. Hashtag question everything. Which is still here. Uh, hashtag question everything. The all new Hyundai Tucson. Promoted by Hyundai USA. So let me click this tag here. And, and read some of the top shit. The top shit. In this tag. Because it's paid. It's promoted. It's not actually trending. And it's not actually what people are talking about. The top tweet. Um, in this tag. Is. Hyundai USA, with their little obnoxious checkmark thing that doesn't mean anything. It means that they knew somebody who knew somebody, or they were big enough that nobody could stop them from being verified. Um, could the key be your phone? Question everything. We did. It's how we built the new all-new Tucson with available Hyundai digital key. The, the commercial is bullshit. It's for a bullshit product. It's for a bullshit thing. And the tag already fucking existed. It already existed and was already being used by conspiracy theorists, by people who fancy themselves truthers, for fucking ever. So Hyundai comes in here with their big corporate money and tells Twitter, you need to make this about our fucking car brand. So that we can advertise basically just difference uh, in terms of the same consumer product between very minute changes. Product A and product B on the shelf, both basically the same materials used to make them, both from the same producers. It's all one big, like, conspiracy. And this is no different. What if your key was your phone? Hey, congratulations! It's another way that your car can get hacked if you lose it. It's another way that your car can be compromised by somebody cloning your fucking phone. Congratulations! You didn't question everything. You made something fucking stupid that nobody needed. You fucking hacks. But the reason I'm bringing this up and the reason I'm so angry with Hyundai and angry with Twitter is because this is a classic example of co-option, of recuperation, as the left tubers would put it. It's where something that already exists and already has momentum in a culture is taken by another for their purposes, completely stripping out the original values and meaning of it so that they can get their fucking hooks in and still get power from it. These mega capitalists uh, who are using the same entrenched bullshit as ever 
And basically, by the way, the same fucking vehicles, because let's be clear, Hyundai hasn't had real innovation in terms of the way their vehicles looked for about a decade. Um, <laughs> this company is telling you to question everything? Why don't I question whether or not I want to buy a fucking Hyundai? Why don't I question whether or not I ever want to have one of your greasy-ass cars uh, under my ass? Right? Why don't I question that? You don't want me to question that. You want me to question whether I'm opening my car door with a key or my phone this time. Because having the little button on your keychain, that was clearly a little bit too fucking difficult for your average Hyundai user, right? We need to make a smartphone app because that'll make it easier, right? I'm not really even angry at the feature because if you're stupid enough, fucking dumb fucked enough to allow access to your entire vehicle from your phone, then you deserve to have your car stolen. I mean, not really. That's mostly hyperbole. It's a joke. For legal reasons, that's a joke. But let me be fucking clear. You're fucking stupid if you buy this. Um, but the, the, the thing that I thought I would tie that in with is co-opting other things. You know? Let's talk Me Too. When Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein, whatever... Uh, Weinstein in, in the whatever Mandela universe, uh, when, when he was found to have fucked a bunch of people without their consent, um, or like sexually assaulted them or something, I'm not exactly sure. I don't fucking remember or care. Um, when that was found to be the case, a bunch of celebrities jumped on board, a tag that a bunch of non-celebrities started to say, hey, me too. Now, I already kind of didn't like this tag, and if you go look and you can dig up a video of why. But, to be extremely clear, I stand by that video because, you know, the whole believe women thing uh, is an inherently sexist way to control the dialogue and to control what people are allowed to question. Um, and the Me Too thing was abused by a lot of unscrupulous actors who decided that they were going to lie about people. So, just to be very fucking clear, uh, I'm not saying that I 100% endorsed it at all, but there were some legitimate people who legitimately were Me Too. And those people finally had a chance to tell their story they finally had a chance to come out and say, yeah, people are scum. Here, you can hear my story, feel a little bit better about yours. We have solidarity, sisterhood, or whatever. That's better than what it turned into, which was an excuse for a bunch of celebrities to act like their lives are awful and to hurl a bunch of unprovable accusations and get media fame off of it. It's the classic Amber Heard, Johnny Depp situation where she was found to be the only person provably abusing anyone. But she gets to keep her roles and do domestic violence talks while Johnny Depp gets to lose all of his roles and be a pariah. Even though he has the recording of her saying that she hit him. Um, but don't call it hit. I didn't punch you. Downplaying abuse, gaslighting. And she cut off the tip of his fucking finger. This would land any standard woman in jail, but this woman is a celebrity and part of the state capitalist class of liberal economics. So she gets to keep everything and more and be the face for domestic violence awareness. <laughs> That's an example. Um, and, and there were multiple other examples that I could bring up Maybe I'll do a fuller video at some point. But even Rose McGowan recently brought it up uh, in an interview she did with Jimmy Dore. She said it was, like, useful as a communication tool, and then a bunch of fucking cunts came in and cunted it up. Um, 
That's one example. Black Lives Matter is another example. Black Lives Matter. If me saying that bothers you, fuck off. I don't need you or want you here. Um, or get very angry in the comments. Give me engagement. Downvote this video. Tell me how evil I am for saying that. But that being said, my agreement with that being voiced, the tag was co-opted. And the organization supporting the tag turned into a political front for a bunch of shit action and ideas. Not the least of which is supporting Biden. Crime Bill Biden. Crime Bill Biden, who helped a bunch of people thrown in prison for bullshit. Broken black families are the Biden legacy. Same with Kamala Harris. Kamala is a cop. Anyone remember that hashtag or are we not allowed to anymore? Um, Kamala uh, laughs about how many fucking innocent people she locked up. How many people who were poor and trying to live she locked up. She laughs about it because she's a callous, heartless bitch. Black families broken are her legacy as well. Prison industrial complex emphasizing the modern day interpretation of slavery authorized by Abraham Lincoln's 13th Amendment saying that you can be a slave if you're a criminal. Same as always, that's why Jim Crow laws existed. They have a ton of laws on the books that primarily allow them to police poor neighborhoods which are still largely minority housed. That way they can target their population and still have the majority of the population on their side. Back the blue, right? Oh, wait. Forgot a lot of people don't do that anymore because uh, they found out that the blue doesn't back them. It's almost like the system is designed to protect the system and always has been. Welcome to the party, pal. But the general idea is that... Um, they supported these people, and then these people in office lost their number and made everything worse. To the point where basically the Black Lives Matter Twitter is kind of anti Biden and Kamala now. Like they should have been maybe before when it counted. Well, assuming voting works, which I don't think it does. But my point in, in bringing that up is they've got a platform that's pretty funny uh, in terms of blatantly accepting only one side of politics. Um, and the tag wasn't started by the organization. The organization took the tag, got a bunch of political money to support the people that the establishment wanted, and then they caved. And they're surprised that the people that they caved to fucked them over. Well, don't be. You were toadies for the establishment, and you lost. Maybe next time try harder to be actual revolutionaries. But the reason I'm bringing that up is the same reason I can also bring up Biden's trans-inclusive military. Right? Or the fact that the CIA has this ad where they're saying like, oh, I'm a woman, I'm a proud Hispanic woman. That means that it's okay that, uh, that, that I'm working for racist murderers who have helped uh, ethnic cleansing and uh, mass racial unrest and regime change, which has resulted in a significant amount of BIPOC deaths. Um, black and brown bodies destroyed by this organization, but hey, let's have this Hispanic woman and a bunch of other uh, minority figures do propaganda videos for us on our YouTube. They have a YouTube, and will eventually end up, maybe, recruiting enough people that forget how shit we are for them, right? So that's, that's where that is, you know? And Biden's trans-inclusive military, oh yeah, the bombs will have rainbow flags. That was a meme. That was political cartoons done by boomers. But now, it's fucking true. 
It's almost like the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, the intelligence industrial complex don't go to sleep because you have an administration you like. It's almost like the system is designed to self-perpetuate and protect itself. Huh. Maybe. Maybe we should oppose the system entirely. <laughs> you know, when I saw the question everything hashtag, my first instinct was to do what I normally do and make a cynical fucking tweet about it. Hashtag question everything is trending? Why is the U.S. lied into every war and military action? Why are cops trained by militaries and given military equipment? Who's profited the most? Oh, wait. It's not actually trending. It's a Hyundai ad. Because Twitter is media manipulation. That, that's it. That's it. That's the tweet. That's the video. Fuck Hyundai. Right? Why is Hyundai telling us to question everything when their very industry was built on the resource extraction done by the government that they don't want us to question. I guarantee, uh, <laughs> I guarantee that if they had the choice, they would suppress stuff like this from their hashtag ad. And they might have done that. I don't know how Twitter's uh, media manipulation uh, tweet control things work. I don't know if they've hidden my tweet, shadow banned my tweet from the trending page. I don't care either. Right? Because I know I'm going to be gone from there eventually anyway. Just like I already was. The whole point that I'm trying to make is these movements, these tags, these ideas, they could be great as long as you don't sacrifice them to the establishment. Like, it boggles the mind how people think that this can change anything for the better. Right? It boggles the mind. Why would it be suddenly better just because a bunch of corporations and public figures are suddenly standing what you were already saying. Ooh, awareness. Yeah, but then when they get considered the people that you talk to about these sorts of things, then the power for controlling the message gets taken out of the little people's hands and consolidated into the hands of the few that could have fucked it up to begin with and probably did. Trans rights. Very good. 100%. I will respect your identity. Right? But I don't respect a fucking troop. I don't care what that troop is. I don't care what you identify as. I don't respect you if you're a troop. I don't respect you if you're a fucking CIA officer. NSA, insert other alphabet agency trying to use inclusivity to patch over the fact that they're bad for literally everyone and especially the most disempowered. I don't support you. The fact that I support basic human decency and I can say Black Lives Matter doesn't mean I support your platform that you used after the tag had already gained momentum and existed. The fact that I opposed rape, and I think rapists are why people should carry, um, doesn't mean I support Me Too when it's being co-opted by money-hungry and power-hungry politicians, celebrities, corporations. Everything is vulnerable, and forgetting that allows you to be attacked. These tags, these ideas, these principles, they can all go away tomorrow if enough official people drag them down to their level. Because they're the ones who made this system. They're the ones who got in and benefit the most. That's the reason it's a shock when these people say anything positive. And it's the reason why you should be suspicious when they do. Because you don't know why they're saying it. Yeah, they're supporting your cause in words. Are they supporting it in spirit? And how do you know? 
The Bohemian Grove has celebrities go to it. Jeffrey Epstein had celebrities on his fucking plane. Celebrities, politicians, corporations, they're all in one big club and you ain't in it. The fact that these things are supported, anything is supported, by some guy who gets paid to lie, or some guy who gets paid to exaggerate, or some guy who gets paid to manipulate, is not evidence that it's getting anywhere. In fact, it might be getting dead. The topic, the subject, the soul, the spirit of whatever it is might be dying because you let people like Hyundai make Twitter ads. Anyway, I just thought I'd say that. Fuck Hyundai. Fuck Twitter. Fuck anyone who says that topics should be co-opted by those who already have power. Keep power in your own fucking hands or lose it forever. This was brought to you by Hopsec Trip, who for some reason decided to throw money at this. Uh, feel free to go subscribe to his channel for 240 glorious pixels of Shemogborn libertarian news content in 60 seconds or around there. Um, you can absorb it on your lunch break. Feel free to hit that to subscribe to me, and as always, smash the state. <laughs>